j'ai le plaisir dans cette attente d'accueillir euh, euh, sur l'estrade Madame Sarah Nunberg, euh, qui va nous, nous, nous faire une, une seconde présentation avant euh, le, le temps de débat. Donc Sarah, vous êtes euh, restauratrice, euh, restauratrice euh, euh, d'objets, euh, avec une, une spécialité euh, euh, d'abord dans les, dans les objets archéologiques et en particulier les, les céramiques euh, précolombiennes. Euh, et plus récemment, vous avez donc développé votre pratique dans, dans le domaine de, de l'art contemporain. Vous avez un, un atelier à New York. Euh, vous enseignez à, à, au Pratt Institute euh, à la fois dans deux départements, ça me, ça me semble intéressant, donc euh, école de, de, de beaux-arts, hein, euh, à la fois en chimie et à la fois en euh, sustainable design. Et euh, vous vous êtes donc dans le cadre de cet enseignement particulièrement orienté vers euh, euh, l'histoire de l'utilisation des, des polymères euh, et euh, leur dégradation. Euh, vous travaillez à la fois euh, en tant que restauratrice pour euh, des, des, des collections privées et des collections publiques et vous avez eu euh, l'occasion d'être présidente pendant plusieurs années euh, d'un important comité, une, une task force euh, américaine qui s'appelle l'American euh, Institute for Conservation of Historic and Artistic Works Sustainability Community, dont vous allez peut-être nous parler. Vous allez euh, surtout ici développer ce qui constitue aujourd'hui votre centre d'intérêt euh, principal, comment euh, euh, faire évoluer les pratiques de la, de la restauration en y intégrant euh, les soucis euh, de euh, durabilité euh, et, de, de, et une compréhension fine en fait, des, des enjeux environnementaux de nos temps. Donc vous allez euh, nous présenter euh, l'application d'un outil qu'on connaît dans l'industrie, le Life Cycle Assessment, euh, son application dans le, le, le domaine de la vie des musées, en particulier les prêts euh, et les expositions. Et vous allez euh, montrer comment vous avez pu décliner cet outil et l'adapter euh, de trois manières différentes euh, au, fine, euh, au Museum Fine Arts euh, de, de Boston. Voilà, je vous remercie. I'm sorry, but my talk isn't up here. <laughs> it's, the wrong, it's not my talk. Excuse me? <laughs> it's not. Oh, really? Thank you. Last spring, the American Institute for Conservation of Historic and Artistic Works, AIC, and the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, MFA, commissioned Northeastern University NEU environmental engineering students under the direction of Dr. Matthew Eckelman to study the, environment, the environmental and economic impact of museum loans and exhibitions. This project developed as a result of discussions concerning the potential for environmental and economic benefits related to recent changes in climate guidelines for museum loans. Consideration of other aspects of loan activities led, led us to examine not only electricity use for environmental control in museums and, and collection facilities, but also the materials and, engine and, en and energy required to transport art for loans and to prepare gallery space for exhibitions. This project is an ongoing collaboration between the fine art conservators and environmental engineers listed in this slide. Because our engineering colleagues are not present today, we will do our best to convey the goals, scope, and findings in this project as it relates to the conservation community. However, please keep in mind that we are not environmental engineers. The AIC committee, Sustainability Committee believes that working sustainably is a natural part of fine art conservation. The link between environmental and art conservation is clear in Gro Brutland's definition of sustainability. 
as he says, development that meets the needs of today without compromising the needs of future generations. This definition is equally applicable to, to the conservation of cultural heritage as we strive to preserve historic and artistic works for the benefit of future generations. One can take this statement further to explore how preserving culture through artifacts and historic structures is essential to community strength and cultural survival. It is counterintuitive to utilize energy and materials in fine art conservation to preserve our cultural heritage without simultaneously considering the environmental impact of our actions and the profound importance of preserving the environment, including reducing waste, ozone depletion, carbon footprint, and depletion of natural resources, to name a few. Many questions remain about what exactly this entails and how best to go green. The application of civil and environmental engineers, engineering tools, such as the life cycle assessment, provides one method to address these questions. Life cycle assessment, or LCA, is a modeling tool for quantifying environmental impacts as a, at a comprehensive systems level. This slide shows the life cycle of a newspaper from the raw material production to product manufacturing, use, and distribution, and waste disposal. The information gained from this process, including identification of energy and resource intensive steps, allows for educated choices that will make the industry more economically and environmentally sustainable. For example, most of us only see the newspaper when we are reading it and we don't appreciate where it comes from or where it goes. But when you are trying to design a more efficient newspaper or any product, you have to understand all the production, use, and disposal phases. To begin to recommend sustainable changes in conservation practices, the AIC Sustainability Committee and the MFA Boston commissioned NEU students to carry out LCAs that would evaluate three significant areas of art conservation and collection care. The three LCAs chosen include LCA 1, which addressed light, uh, reduced energy consumption and bulb costs in lighting one gallery at the MFA Boston. LCA 2 addressed the energy and materials use involved in producing and transporting alone. LCA 3 addressed reducing energy used and costs resulting from changes in environmental control in one gallery at the MFA. In each LCA, students entered data gathered at the MFA into SEMA Pro 7.3. This is a professional software tool widely used by industries and environmental consultants for life cycle assessment. In SEMA Pro, several da inventory databases are available to study materials and actions. The LCA focus depends on the interest of the company or industry who commissions the project. LCA1 compared the life cycle of MR16 halogen lamps with MR16 light emitting diode lamps, LEDs, to, de to determine which lamp the MFA should install in one gallery where the halogen lamps were failing approximately five times faster than they should have. Sorry, than the, where the lead LED lamps were failing, dimming after six months of approximately 1,000 hours of use. Excessive heat buildup from inadequately ventilated halogen fixtures caused this failure in the LED. Work off previous LCAs of LEDs and their own research, the students examined two possibilities. Replacing MR16 and PAR38 halogen lamps with MR16 lamps or keeping the halogens and abandoning the leads. The MFA has about 
has about 25,000 lights throughout the museum. These lamps, lighting maintenance, and energy use comprise about 35% of the museum's total utility costs. The results of this study were particularly valuable because they could be applied to all other galleries at the MFA. Comparison of the efficiencies of cost and the impact of material use from cradle to grave showed that halogen lamp is much less energy efficient with a 42 watt halogen lasting for 2,000 hours and a 7 watt LED bulb projected to last 24,000 hours. As seen in this chart, LED lamp use results in approximately one quarter the environmental impact from cradle to grave than halogen lamps, even when the LED bulb fails far more rapidly than expected. So it is more efficient for the MFA to remove the halogen lamp housing and replace it with LED lamps than to keep the current housing and maintain halogen lamps. The second LCA examined the carbon footprint of a loan. A previous LCA concerning museum loans by Simon Lampert informed the, st in the structure for this project, and it was very useful. Museums depend on loans as, in as an increasingly important revenue source. In 2013, the MFA will have loaned a total of 823 objects to 82 venues, twice the number of loans that were sent five years ago. Art packing and transport, along with exhibition assembly and disassembly, require excessive amounts of high-quality, expensive materials made from virgin resources and are energy-intensive in their production and, in and disposal. With museum loans increasing in number, it is the responsibility of museum professionals to make the loans process environmentally and economically sustainable. The first step towards this change is to pinpoint wasteful activities. In this study, we examined exhibition hall and exhibit case construction, crating and box preparation, and objects transportation by air and truck. Two MFA typical loan destinations were considered, the Nagoya Museum of Fine Arts in Japan and the Tampa Museum of Art in Florida, USA. The LCA studied incoming and outgoing loans for an exhibition of 30 objects, assuming one object per 150 by 100 by 33 centimeter crate. The loan categories included conservation procedures, gallery preparation, art packaging and repackaging, crate construction, unpacking, exhibition space preparation, art transport with two round trips for the courier and one round trip for the artwork. This graph illustrates that the process of unpacking, paint shop <coughs> preparation, and repacking contribute the least amount to the carbon footprint of the loan. Pet plexiglass vitrines are responsible for the highest materials contribution to carbon emissions of the loan with inputs of 28,600 kilograms of CO2 equivalent for one loan of 30 objects. So that's the bar in the middle. To put this in perspective, an average car emits 8,887 grams of CO2 per one gallon of gasoline. Today, the MFA only uses Plexi for temporary exhibitions and recycles 40% after use. In the graph, exhibition input is so high, the one at bar on the right, because it includes electricity for lighting and climate controls. This is addressed in the following, uh, in the two other LCAs of this study. Along with plexiglass, crate use was identified as a hot spot for the incoming loan phase. The green bar indicating crate use illustrates that the reuse of crates as few as four times in five years save 75% on carbon emissions. Storing crates or standardizing crates for reuse would reduce the impact of crate production. Versatile crates that function as travel mounts and exhibition cases would also reduce materials usage. Additional actions, of course, are crate construction from local forest stewardship council approved wood. 
So for the materials aspect of a loan, crate and plexi reuse would lower the loan carbon impact. Recycling plexiglass is also an option, but the cradle to grave impact of, of resources required for recycling must also be considered. Reduction and reuse should always be a priority. The results of this LCA concerning art transport were also informative. In this chart, the red bar represents the courier, indicating that the highest environmental impact of all loan phases proved to be the carbon footprint of the courier who travels two round trips for every one object round trip and has more than three times the impact of the art transport, depending on the mode of transport, whether it's truck, passenger, or freight, or freight plane. To make this study relevant, it was essential to quantify the value of the museum experience. So a functional unit of a number of views of a piece of art based, a piece of, of art based on yearly museum attendance was assigned to normalize the study. This is typical for an LCA, where apples to apples comparisons are essential, giving weight to an action that might not have its own volume or value. When taking into account the expected number of views of the art, the carbon emissions per viewing in Japan is approximately 4.4 times less than the emissions per viewing in Florida, because there are approximately 10 times more views of the art in Japan. This LCA was useful as it brings attention to the hot spot of courier travel that drives up the cost and carbon footprint of museum loans. Although it is typical to send one courier per museum for each portion of art travel, considering other options that would fulfill this requirement could lead to more financially and environmentally sustainable museum loans. Sometimes, groups of museums appoint a single courier to check condition and oversee transport, unpacking and repacking an object. As in the previous study from Lampert, um, we feel that a national or international courier certification program would allow institutions to hire local museum professionals who have been trained as couriers. The courier would meet the art and at the airport or truck depot and oversee handling and condition reports. We need to work with colleagues and insurance companies to encourage approval of such new approaches. LCA3 studied whether cost savings in, and reduced environmental impact could be attained from new environmental guidelines recently recommended for the museum environment. We had intended to carry out an LCA of a gallery maintained at 55% relative humidity plus or minus 5% versus the same gallery space maintained at 55% plus or minus 10%. The LCA seemed to be the perfect tool for this issue as it addressed all types of environmental impacts and, produce, and produces a quantitative result. However, during our first discussions with NEU environmental engineers and students, it became clear that, unlike analysis of the production of a newspaper, analysis of environmental control is not straightforward. In the lighting and loan studies, an easy comparison could be made with controlled circumstances. Conversely, in the HVAC study, variables gallery to gallery in a single museum and between museums and climate zones needed to be considered. As a result, we carried out a much more specific, limited study that attempted to quantify energy use and cost savings for a limited set of parameters. The LCA explored energy savings for the temporary shutdown of air handling equipment for one gallery at the MFA. Maintaining strict environmental control of any space is an energy intensive and costly proposition. Traffic from museum visitors adds further challenges to controlling ambient environment. The MFA wanted to determine whether energy and money would be saved under these new conditions and whether the practice could effectively be extended to other similar galleries. These results may be useful for other museums. However, the individual nature of building structures, outdoor climate, and gallery usage make direct application of the MFA findings to other institutions problematic. 
To attain information for the LCA study, data was collected from March 6 to April 4th in 2013, when the air handling system for the central core of the American wing was shut down for each night for 12 hours between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. The gallery studied shown in blue in the map is made up of 16 zones distributed over four floors with a total volume of about 650,000 cubic feet. The air handlers consist of a sheet metal enclosure, return and supply fans, an air filter, a humidifier, and control devices. During shutdown, 50% of the supply and return fans in the air handling system were shut off. For this period, if the relative humidity in one gallery dropped below 40% RH, or 18 degrees Celsius, and rose above 60% RH, or 24 degrees Celsius, the fans were programmed to come back online. On average, during the study period, the air handlers were reactivated for 2.6 hours each night, as you can see in this slide. This graph illustrates that by turning off the air handlers, related electricity usage is reduced to 24,000 kilowatt hours per month, illustrating a 42% monthly reduction in electricity required by the air handler on a nightly basis. This, L this LCA illustrates how reduced air handler use achieves many indirect upstream benefits for the environment. Electricity consumption is responsible for 40% of total carbon emissions in the United States. Besides greenhouse gas emissions, electricity generation produces sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, affecting other environmental issues such as ecotoxicity and water intake. Different forms of electricity production cause different environmental impacts. Coal fire generation contributes to 90% carbon emissions of electricity generation in Massachusetts, but varies region to region in the United States, as illustrated in this map. In the pie chart, you can see that the coal is the greatest source of energy throughout. The MFA continues collecting data from controlled shutdown of the air handlers to this gallery hoping to attain a better understanding of the practice over the long term. Future studies would benefit from including each element of the HVAC system to determine the total impact con controlled shutdown has on the system involved. This spring, this, the spring 2013 LCA studies were successful in their analysis of lighting options from cradle to grave, global warming impact of a loan exhibition, and energy and cost savings from controlled shutdown of air handling units. Although the lighting study unequivocally demonstrates the benefits of lead use in galleries, the HVAC systems analysis clearly demonstrates the need for caution in applying LCA results too broadly. Future work concerning common museum practices will investigate creating a software tool to incorporate an energy savings analysis on a site-by-site -site basis. The LCA project continues this fall and spring when NEU students will compare the energy and materials needed to exhibit objects that require close tolerances for relative humidity and temperature in microclimates to the energy and materials required to exhibit or store sensitive objects in controlled storage facilities or exhibition spaces. This study will also explore aspects of exhibitions beyond the carbon footprint to include the human health and ecotoxicity impacts that result from materials use, waste management, and art transport for a full life cycle inventory. In a second project, students will evaluate the environmental impact of the materials used in large-scale treatment procedure carried out on a Romanesque church, church facade in the collection of the MFA. In spite of trends to increase global travel ex of expeditions and continued use of materials from virgin resources, the museum community has begun to take steps to function more sustainably. Thanks to many people in this room, the field continues to move forward, refining approaches to environmental control. 
Our project illustrates another tool that can be used to measure the environmental impact of our methods. We hope that with continued LCA studies, AIC can begin to compile a resource for the international museum community to use towards sustainable practices. I would like to thank my co-authors, Pam Hatchfield and Matthew Eckelman, for their collaboration on this project, along with the Northeastern University students. The MFA staff and the AIC also I'd like to thank for making this project possible. Euh, merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup Bruce, merci beaucoup Sarah pour ces deux, ces deux interventions. Dans la titre personnel, je retiens plusieurs choses. D'abord, le musée euh, n'est pas euh, une institution coupée du monde euh, qui l'entoure. Il est euh, connecté euh, avec, euh, avec le monde, avec l'environnement, avec les économies nationales, avec les, les enjeux de société. Euh, pour autant, il a une, une économie propre, fondée sur des, des valeurs qui lui sont propres. Et à ce titre-là, je tiens à, à vous remercier des, des, des dispositifs que vous nous avez présentés, euh, bah, qui permettent, euh, si vous me permettez un petit, petit mot d'esprit par rapport au thème de, de, de la matinée, euh, euh, des, des décisions euh, plus ou mieux euh, éclairées. Euh, je... Nous avons quelques minutes pour un temps d'échange de, de, de questions. Je ne sais pas s'il y a des, des questions dans la salle sur euh, ces interventions qui, qui, encore une fois, parlent, de, je trouve, de façon très très directe, hein, de, de valeurs, euh, de combinaison des valeurs, euh, de complexité de, de, de ce qui constitue quand même l'économie de notre action euh, euh, à tous, certes interconnectés avec le, le monde qui nous entoure, c'est important de ne pas l'oublier, mais quand même euh, quelque chose qui est, qui est propre euh, aux institutions patrimoniales, d'ailleurs pas seulement aux musées, excusez-moi, aussi archives, bibliothèques euh, et institutions patrimoniales d'une manière générale. Dernier point, peut-être, euh, ce qui est intéressant dans vos deux présentations, c'est que euh, vous, vous abordez aussi la, 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 la question de euh, l'application de, de, de ces types de, de, de dispositifs euh, euh, matriciel à des, à des problématiques qui sont des problématiques de masse, donc de, sur lesquelles la moindre décision euh, engage des coûts majeurs. Donc merci à tous les deux. Est-ce qu'il y a des, des questions dans la salle Alors okay. j'ai l'impression qu'il y, qu y a une question tout au fond là-bas. Je ne sais pas s'il y a un micro. Uh, microphone, please. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Deborah Potter from the Tate Gallery in London, and I had two questions to Sarah. The first question is that at the Tate, we have adopted the BESO guidelines, which have a presumption against the use of couriers um, for international loans. We kind of assess this based on our risk assessed approach and we then use the carrier on a reduced number of trips depending on high risk objects or if there's a complex installation. You said that following the findings that you were then exploring the use of reducing the number of carriers Has the MFA reduced the number of carriers as yet? That was my first question. This, uh, let me ask the second very quickly. You said that it is more sustainable to reuse packing materials. Did you compare the cost of storing the packing materials and compare this to actually then remaking them? Thank you. So for, for the qu first question, um, Pam Hatchfield is here from the MFA, and I think she can answer that. I'll answer, okay, I'll answer the second one first. Yes, um, we, uh, the students did uh, uh, equilibrate the, the findings, um, look at comparing storing uh, the crates particularly, and each number of years that you store the crates, you do reduce your carbon impact drastically. Um, you do have to take into account transporting the crates. Um, and 
uh, running the facility, but the longer you store them, the more carbon you're, you're reducing. Does that answer the question? Yes, so how long do you have to store before it you so go? It works out cheaper, how many years? Initially it was five years, and then eat with each with each year adding, you, you increase the, um, the amount. I have a chart that I can show you after, which really lays this out. Lovely. Okay, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce qu'il y a une autre question dans la salle? Oh, I was answer oh excuse me. Non, non. Est-ce qu'il y a une autre question dans la salle, peut-être? She will answer one of the questions. Oh, okay, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not sure if you can. Can you can you hear me? Yes. <coughs> um, the um, we we do not store crates for objects that we don't think are going to be loaned again uh, because we don't have the space. So there's a limit to the amount of space that we have available for storing crates. Um, and there are costs associated with it. If we know that an object is going to be loaned a certain number of times or is likely to be loaned on a recurring basis, we save the crates. We also build them um, to sometimes to a much higher standard. If we know a crate is destined for single use, it may not be built to the highest of standards when we know that something is going to need to be transported over a long period of time repeatedly, it changes the kind of hardware that we might include in the crate and all of that. Um, regarding the question of couriers, we have so many people traveling all the time that for sheer reasons of um, staffing at the museum, we try to reduce already. I mean, aside from the carbon footprint, we try to reduce already because otherwise we'd have nobody left in the building. So we, we often use our colleagues if there are various museums that are transporting objects for a particular exhibition, our registrars will talk and we try to have um, our colleagues represent. But sometimes it's a question of the insurance and particularly if there is a very valuable uh, series of objects. We are required by the insurance company to accompany the objects from our own institution, particularly if they're covered by our own insurance. Um, and we've talked actually about the possibility of being able to work with the insurance companies to, if we could develop this kind of system where there are certified couriers or conservators who could be certified to, um, to evaluate and accompany other uh, institutions' loans. Um, this is something we're just starting to talk about, so that has actually not happened as of yet. Merci beaucoup. Euh, une euh, nouvelle question, deux questions alors très rapidement parce que j'ai peur que sinon vous n'ayez pas le temps de déjeuner. Euh, donc je vous en prie, je ne sais pas qui a le micro. Over there. Ok. Oh, ok. Um, thank you both for your uh, presentations. They were useful and practical. Sarah, this is sort of a follow-up. Pam alluded to it a bit, but I'm wondering. Um, I'm intrigued by your idea of the certification for couriers, national and international, and if you've at least considered who might oversee that. Could that be um, a wonderful collaboration between the AIC and ICOM-CC, and are there models um, outside of conservation that we might look at? Um, it, it reminds me of another area where we need to be focusing in this is emergency response and preparedness recovery and, and the opportunity of working together. So I'm just wondering if you've thought more about it and what the next steps might be. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I have thought about it a bit. And um, last year at AIC meeting, um, we, uh, the Sustainability Committee had a lunch session where we were actually Matthew Eckelman presented the loan, the LCA findings. And then we had a breakout session where uh, just people, the, the lunch session attendees discussed this. And we were discussing a bunch about how this could happen. Um, so my thoughts have been if AIC could have a certification program, much like the, as you say, the disaster planning of the CERT, um, which, you know, when I was in New York for Hurricane Sandy, 
really came in and was quite active. And if we could have a training program like that, I think it would be a really great thing to strive for. As a private conservator, I have traveled for three or four museums at one time for cost savings, and it, it worked just fine. So. Merci beaucoup. Je crois qu'il y avait une dernière question ici. Enfin, en tout cas, c'est la dernière qu'on entendra. I had a question for Bruce. Uh, I'm interested in the assessments of significance that you described as being a fundamental part of the exhibition decisions. Um, in your experience, have you, has it been easy to come to agreement about significance, or is there a tendency to inflate the grade and use that assessment to apply your paranoid conservatism to, rather than the sensitivity one? That's a really good question. It, <clears throat> excuse me, it varies from person to person and even who chairs exhibition meetings, that dynamic. Uh, as I said, some people are very unhappy with the idea full stop. Uh, and I presume they're also unhappy with collection risk management based on similar assessments of value. Um, within this particular institution, the National Museum, it's a slowly evolving situation and we're winning hearts and minds one by one. Um, yes, there is a tendency to um, exaggerate the value, particularly if people are fond of a particular object. So we get curators who specialise in a particular area. <clears throat> I wouldn't say they lack perspective, but um, you know, someone who's interested in photography, for example, um, will naturally want to uh, concentrate more on that and perhaps exaggerate the significance of a particular photograph. But see, this is where a double approach helps because we're looking also at the uh, fading rates. And if we find that someone is pushing up the significance, and remember, we've only got two categories there, high and low, that's it. We're not, we're not doing anything fancy with that. It's just a value judgment. Well, we can fall back on the fading rate and say, well, look, really, this isn't particularly fugitive, as far as we can tell from accelerated ageing, why is that qualification? Um, so perhaps we can tone down our concerns in this case a little bit. So the dual approach is the important thing. I'm not sure how well that comes across in the talk, but that's, that was the conception, was to always use them both. So for things of very high value, we're very careful with them. So in fact, with microfading, we don't microfade everything anymore. We did a lot initially. But for objects with very high values that might be affected by fading, we will microfade them whether or not we have a fair idea of what it's like. Um, so we, we've always got that back up with the other technique and it's the combination of the two that makes us less paranoid in exhibition meetings. Merci beaucoup. Écoutez, je, je, je vous propose donc pour euh, terminer la matinée. Merci encore infiniment pour vos deux, deux interventions vraiment absolument passionnantes euh, qui nous rappellent aussi les très très nombreuses données d'entrée à prendre en compte dans les, dans les décisions muséales qui ont toujours un coût euh, pédagogique, euh, social, conservatoire. Et ça, vous l'avez rappelé euh, avec brio et vous proposez des solutions euh, in progress, mais vraiment intéressantes. Et, euh, je vous...